And here's the other thing that we realized. We realized that as the church, we had to recognize that we have to shape culture or culture will try to shape us. We've got to let our mind be washed by the word. We've, we, we've become, Christianity has become a subculture. What I mean by that is we're just one of many subcultures within culture. But Jesus didn't come to raise up just another subculture. He, raised, he came to raise up a counterculture. You know what that means? That means opposite, an opposite culture. But we have to understand that what God is asking us to do is stand up in this season of time. Stand up and understand what Christmas is about. Uh, there was a, a school teacher that was actually teaching her children um, in school what um, Christmas was about. And she was actually telling, she was a Sunday school teacher, she was actually telling the story of uh, the birth of Jesus and all that happened. And she stopped for a moment to find out if they understood. And she said, okay, so can, can somebody tell me who the three wise men are? And one little five-year-old boy raised his hands and he said, they're called the three maggots. She said, um, no, but the magi brought three different gifts. Can anybody tell me what the three gifts were? That same little boy raised his hand and he said, gold, Frankenstein, and Smurfs. She said, mm, close enough, Okay. And while she was explaining this, there was another little boy over and he was drawing and, and he was drawing a depiction of the nativity scene and you could clearly see the, the cows and the sheep and you saw Mary and you saw Joseph and you saw the baby Jesus in the manger. And over to the side, there was this really big fat man. And the teacher was like, I, who is this? I understand all the, who is this? And the little boy said, that is round John Virgin. <laughs> Sometimes we have to think, what are our children getting out of what we're teaching them? Okay. Round John Virgin. Okay. So, so what we have to understand is that we need to be sure that we're bringing the true message of Christianity and that we're actually called to redeem culture. We're, we're the ones that are called to, to shine the light to shine why Jesus came and to begin to redeem culture. That's part of what we do. We don't decide, like maybe the Amish or the Mennonite, to just drop out of culture. Right? They just decided at some point in time, let's just drop out of culture. They rejected technology. They rejected anything that they called worldly. But what we have to understand is that God is calling us not to reject, but to redeem for example, when um, my, my husband's dad was growing up, and obviously we know Bishop, and he, when he was uh, a young man, young preacher, and the television came out, do you know that a lot of the church rejected television? They called it Hellavision. It might be accurate. <laughs> they reject, they called it the one-eyed devil. And as a result, they actually rejected technology and kind of withdrew from everything. See, what we have to understand is that Jesus is the creator of all things. The devil comes to pervert things. The devil comes to hijack things. But Jesus comes and empowers us to take back what's been stolen. So the television the radio, technology, the internet, has now been used to push the gospel into places in the earth that we may not be able to go. I found out that most of our stuff that we do here is actually going behind uh, the Islamic curtain. It's being broadcast in different places in Iran and in Iraq and in Afghanistan. How? Through the internet. Places that can't otherwise hear are hearing because we haven't rejected technology, but we have redeemed a technology. Amen? A lot of churches or a lot of Christians back in the day, they kind of decided, you know, well, to be poor is to be spiritual. So they rejected um, finance, finances. They rejected uh, um, being involved in the financial world. God, God, that's never what... God intended for us. He, you know, they had this mentality, if you're poor, you're, you know, if you're, if you're poor, you're more holy. 
How many know we've rejected that? <laughs> we've been poor. <laughs> Having abundance, that's better. You can have money as long as money doesn't have you. Come on, we, we, we redeem it. I remember back in, I think it was maybe the 80s or the early 90s, Oral Roberts. How many of you remember Oral Roberts? He was building a, sit, a city of faith, a place for um, doctors and medical staff that had faith in their heart, could actually treat people with medicine, but also engage their faith at the same time. How many remember the city of faith? And there was this huge controversy because at the time, a racetrack owner, a horse racetrack owner where people gambled and people made bets decided that he needed a part of what Oral Roberts was doing and he gave Oral Roberts eight million dollars of racetrack money and you know what the church world was shocked the church world was horrified that he would take unholy unrighteous racetrack money how many understand money is neither good nor bad? It's what you do with it. Let me tell you, or Robert said, thank you very much, took that money and put it to work building and fulfilling a dream that God had given to him. Amen? Money is neither good nor bad. It's what we do with it. We've got to learn how to redeem things. Music. Arts, entertainment. The enemy has tried to say, this is my domain. And you know what? We Christians, we just let him have it. That's why we've got all the mess that we've got in Hollywood right now. <laughs> because we said that's, that's the devil's territory. No, but you know what? Now we've got Christian companies that are rising up and, and making productions that are good quality productions and, and beginning to invade the entertainment industry. I believe that we've got to have a heart to understand that God wants to invade every single aspect of society. Every single aspect, God is raising up men and women of God. We've ministered to many of them. Men and women of God of great renown. People that have more money than they know what to do with, more fame than they know what to do with, and yet God is redeeming them to be a voice for him. I'm, we're, we're living in one of the most exciting times, I'm telling you. 